if you do any kind of code gen in C Sharp, you should take a serious look at a not so new capability in C Sharp called C Sharp Source Generators. Source Generators allow you to move the churn and complexity in reflection and things of that nature, really a discovery within your program from the runtime to compile time. So that at compile time, you basically do all those things while uh, the, your, your, while the, the compiler is running. So it runs, it in, injects code into the compilation process. Today, what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be creating a simple source generator for you. And then I'm also going to be showing you how you can easily take that source generator and um, make some modifications to the project file so that it can be published as a NuGet package and other consumers of it will get those capabilities uh, that you're looking to provide. Stay tuned. It's going to be a great, fun talk. <music> So at the time of this recording, all generators have to be .NET standard 2.0 class libraries. If you use any other kind of class library, again, at the time of this writing, it will not work as a source generator. The cool thing is that for a lot of the language features that we have right now, uh, you can actually have a different language than the runtime that the language is running on. So you're still able to um, uh, to get gain the benefits of new language features. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's create a new, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Let's go ahead and let's create a new one. Create a new class library. Um, we're gonna put it here. We'll call it um, um, code generator. And we're going to switch this again to .NET Standard 2.0 because that's the only um, thing that will work with generators. Anything else will not work. Okay, so we're all set with that. And then what we want to do so we can use new language features, even though we are on .NET Standard, is we're going to open up the project file. And then we're just going to add a lang version. And then we will say... 11.0 that give us the latest version of C sharp that gives us things like file scoping and all kinds of cool things that you get in the new C sharp uh, language features okay so we're done with that and let's let's rename this <clears throat> for the sample generator uh, and just call it sample gen. That's fine. Open this guy up. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to add two references uh, to the project file. Uh, one for um, co both code analysis, one for code analysis common, and then one for code analysis um, uh, C sharp. So let's go ahead and let's add that. I'm going to copy that from somewhere else and add it here, edit the file. We can go here and add that. But you can also find this if you open up the, uh, go to manage NuGet packages. And then over here, you could also just type it in. So Microsoft uh, code analysis. Right, and then they will come up right there, right? <clears throat> so here are the two code analyzers. So let's go ahead and let's make this a generator. And to make it something a generator, you basically have to um, override the, uh, or implement the iSource generator interface. Try the appropriate types there. Okay. And then once you do that, there's two methods that you're going to have to actually create implementations for. So I'll just <clears throat> go the Visual Studio way. And there you have it. And then the other thing you have to do to make something a generator is that you have to have it um, implement the 
code generator uh, attribute. So generator attribute, okay. And that's it. You're all said and done. This is officially a generator. Now, so when this generator runs, it's first going to call initialize, and then at some point, it's going to actually call uh, execute. So let's override these because at this point, it's going to crash. Uh, the build will crash when you actually try to implement it. So in this initialize, let's go ahead and let's just show what directory um, this is scoped to. Okay. And then we will just write it to a file somewhere. Okay, and where this is located, we'll find somewhere in my fold, my um, my file locations here. So we'll just put it right there. And then over here in execute, <clears throat> we'll just uh, close that. We don't care about that. Actually, over here in execute, we will. Let's move this to execute. And this we will call. Okay, so what's going to happen is that when this generator is run, it will call, it will first call initialize and it'll write the current directory to initialize folder and uh, to initialize file and then it'll call execute and write it to the, ex write the, the path at that time to the execute folder. <clears throat> so we've got our generator created now. The question is, how do we use this generator? How do we implement it? Uh, so in order to implement it, let's go to something that's going to use it and add a reference to the project. So add a reference to the, pro um, to the um, this generator's project. And when you build, I'm going to put this here so we can have everything run side by side. Uh, but when you build here, you'll notice that nothing will be created. Right. Well, why is nothing being created? Well, this has not been fully turned into a generator. If I go here and I look in my analyzers, um, I don't see it listed here. And of course, when we say source generators, they use this analyzer framework to operate. So, if the, if it's not showing up as an analyzer, then you know it's not <clears throat> it's not being being seen as such. So let's go ahead and let's open up the project file. And I can, you can see that there's this project reference which says you should connect to it. So next thing we need to say is we need to add this output. And that will be analyzer. All right. <clears throat> and then we build this. And you should have seen actually before <clears throat> before we even did that, it popped up immediately. Here's the initialize, here's the execute. Um, and of course, if you go in here, you now see that sample generator is showing. And here's the generator that we just created and whatever. It's all set, all working properly, right? <clears throat> and if we look at, <clears throat> what is created in here, you can see that this is the folder where it's being loaded. And I'm going to tell you that this folder is quite dynamic where it's loaded. So do not depend on current directory when you're using this technology because um, it's not guaranteed that it'll be there. Great. So if this was 
all that generators uh, did, I suppose uh, they would be relatively useful, but not much, uh, not much use. Basically, they'd be something that ran during compilation, but they do even more than that, right? So one of the cool things you can do with generators is that you can actually inject code into the build process. So in this case, let's go ahead and let's add some code that will be injected into the overall build. And then we'd be able to call it from the actual calling program. So and we'll use the cool new C sharp 11 feature. So as you can see, although it's, this is .NET standard, I am using C sharp 11. There we go. So how do we inject this into the overall uh, code base? Well, you can do it during this execute process, right? So now, well, let's get rid of this or leave it alone, actually. Let's just go down, right? And then the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new uh, source text from the actual text that we have. So and then we're going to say code here, and then we're going to just use ASCII for now. Yeah, so that's going to load up this code here <clears throat> as source text. And then we're just going to add that to the context. And then we'll call it source. And that's basically it. Everything is done. This is actually this actually uh, done working. I can actually go in here and type my test, what I call it, my test class. And give this and then I can actually do this. Clean it up just a bit, and then let's run this build. <laughs> so you'll notice something strange here. You'll notice that over here, I think the build has succeeded, but the IDE actually is showing failure. Well, the IDE is not correct in this case, and this was supposed to have been resolved, but it's still sort of like doesn't, doesn't quite catch it. <clears throat> But if I click over here, you'll notice that that's working just fine. And it says something has been done one time, right? And there's no issue there. Again, uh, we're brought to you <laughs> by just simply likes and subscribe. So if you like what we're doing, then please subscribe so we can keep bringing you content. Um, and as always, happy coding and have a blessed day.